Hi, I'm Daniel Souza and welcome to Aptitude Academy. This is part two on the lecture on averages. Here's your first sum. All right, for your first sum now, they've told you that you have the average of 30 results to be 20 and you have the average of 20 results to be 30. So what's the total average? Now, if you've watched the first video, this should be quite easy to solve. So you just have to find the sum again, divided by the total number and you have an average, right? So we'll solve this easily. This will be 30 into 20 plus 20 into 30, right? This is just the number into the average divided by the total number. Now the number here are the results, not the averages, okay? Even though the numbers are same when you add them up, make sure you know what you're adding and where you're putting what, right? So you've got 30 plus 20 here, right? That comes from the results because they are the number of items. Okay, so now you've got this. Now 13 to 20 plus 20 to 30 is gonna be 600 plus 600, that's 1200, divided by 30 plus 20 is 50, 1200 by 50 is 24, right? And this is gonna be average. Easy, let's go on to problem number two. All right, now for the second sum, they've told you that groups of 55, 60, and 45 have averages of 50, 55, and 60. What is the total average of the group, right? So now, similar to the first problem, you're just gonna multiply it out, get the total sum divided by the total number of people, and you're gonna get your average. The thing what they're trying to trick you here is that look at the numbers in the groups column and the marks column, right? You have 55, 60, and 45 in the groups, and you've got 50, 55, and 60 in the marks. So you see there are similar numbers, right? And if you don't really know what goes in the denominator, you're gonna make a mistake, right? If you put the marks in the, in the denominator instead of the groups, you're gonna get a different answer. And there's definitely gonna be an answer in the options that has that answer in, right? Which is incorrect. So let's just solve it and clear that doubt. So you have 55 into 50, plus 60 into 55, plus 45 into 60, right? And make sure also that you write these brackets, right? Because sometimes when you're simplifying in a hurry, you might miss that out and you might add numbers there which don't need to be added, right? So first need to multiply them and then need to add them individually. So you divide this by the groups. So you have 55 plus 60 plus 45. All right, so this is gonna be about uh, 55 into 50, right? So that is 2,750, right? Plus uh, 60 into 55 is gonna be 3,000 plus 3,000, so 300, so 3,300. Plus um, 45 into 60 is gonna be about 2,700, 2,700 um, divided by 55 plus 60 plus 45, 60 plus 45 is 105, 105 plus 45 is 160, 160. This is gonna be about uh, 2,000 plus 3,000, 5,000, 5,000, 7,000, 7,000 plus 700, 300, 8,000, 8,000, 8,750. divided by 160. And this comes out to be 54.68, right? So now this is nothing close to whatever your marks are, I mean, in a whole number, but this is your answer. And this might be one of the options. If it isn't exactly, then always uh, select the nearest number, right? So if it was 55 there, mark 55. But if 54.68 is there, always mark 54.68. Let's go into problem number three. All right, now for the third problem, what they've said is that you have an average of 10 numbers is equal to seven. Right, now if each of the numbers is multiplied by 12, what is the new average? Now this is a very important concept for you to understand for the future as well. So let's spend some time on it. All right, now forget about these 10 numbers. Suppose you have three numbers. You have X, Y, and Z, right? And I ask you to find the average. So you're going to write an equation like this, right? X plus Y plus Z by three is equal to your average, correct? So now suppose X, Y, and Z are some numbers and you get the average A, okay? Fine, now what I'm gonna do is, suppose I multiply 12 on both sides of the equation, right? Now here I've multiplied 12 into X plus Y plus Z by three is equal to 12A. Now if I simplify it in the next step, you see that 12 gets multiplied into X plus 12 get, gets multiplied into Y and 12 gets multiplied into Z, right? So now you have 12X plus 12Y plus 12Z, right, divided by three is equal to 12a. Now what this essentially has become is that 12 has been multiplied into each of the numbers and when you calculate the average again, right, suppose 12x was now one number, 12y was number was one number and 12z was one number. When you find the average of these three numbers, you will see that it becomes 12a, right? If you compare it with the first equation, you should understand that if all your numbers are changed in a similar way, the average will also change in the same way, in the exact same way, right? So if X and Y and Z are all multiplied by 12, your average A will also be multiplied by 12. Suppose it is divided by, say, six, right? Your average will also be divided by six. 
suppose it's added by 10, your average will be added by 10, right? Suppose it's subtracted by four, your, your average also will be subtracted by four, right? So whatever happens to all your numbers, the exact same thing will happen to the average. Keep in mind though that this operation has to happen to all the numbers, right? So if in your problem there was suppose the average of 10 numbers is seven and five of them are multiplied by 12, what is your new average? Then you can't say this, right? But for this sum now, you know that the average of 10 numbers is seven, fine. All of them are multiplied by 12. Hence, what is your new average? Easy, seven into 12, that is 84. And that's your answer, right? So in the future, don't spend more than five seconds on sums like this, right? Understand what's happening exactly. All the numbers are being affected. Hence, the average should also be affected in the same way. Right, so this is part two on lecture on averages where we've solved three basic problems and we understood what happens when you fiddle with all the numbers in a given set, right? What happens to the average? In part three and four, we'll solve problems where uh, explicit numbers are not given, right? You'll have problems like if the average of x numbers is y square and the average of y numbers is x square, what's the total average, right? We see problems like that in part three and four. If you like this lecture, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, subscribe and share it with all your friends. Until then, spread the knowledge.